For any passage, but especially the ones involving charts and graphs, it's important not to let the topic of the passage take hold of you and make you kind of try to need to understand more deeply what's going on. Here, let's go right to the passage so that we can understand what that is saying. Then we'll use that to understand the graph, or in this case, the chart. So uh, we're trying to complete the same statement, so just fill in the blank, basically. In kind of a language from what is now the U.S. Southeast, vocabulary pertaining to corn cultivation resembles equivalent vocabulary in the Tato Zaquian language from a uh, family in Mexico. This resemblance is perhaps attributable to cultural contact. Such words could have entered Cato through the intermediary of the neighboring but unrelated Chitimacha language uh, concurrent with the dissemination of corn itself from Mexico into the Southeast after 700 CE. Now, just to pause there for a second, if I wanted to, I can go up here and be like, okay, here is the origin of the corn word based on this other language that I'm hoping I'm pronouncing correctly. They talked about Cato and Chitimacha, and both of them say that it's from the corn language. So it's it's just repeating information that's very clearly uh, in the chart and just a yes, no column. So not really saying anything important here. Um, uh, that the vocabulary pertaining to domestic crops accompanies them as they diffuse, meaning spread, into new regions is an established phenomenon globally. Crops may also be decoupled from vocabulary altogether. Corn cultivation became ubiquitous among the southeastern tribes, yet, well, most important thing is the word yet there, right? So it's saying there's some sort of contrast. So this whole passage is saying how these two languages at the bottom of the chart got their word for corn from this other language that's kind of like represented by the right column in the chart. And then there's a contrast. Yet, yet, there's some differences, right? Well, probably then we're going to focus on the two no's. These are also Southeastern languages, as as told to us by the title, uh, and yet their words for corn have nothing to do with this language, or at least according to this chart, they don't. And plus, that, that matches with this idea of something being decoupled, decouple, right? To couple something is to pair it up. So decouple means unpair it, right? So these things are unlinked. So let's go to the choices here. We're talking maybe about the origins of the, the word for corn in these different languages. So A, the origins of vocabulary pertaining to the crop vary across languages in the region. Yeah, well, that's true because some have a no and some have a yes as terms of the origin. So yeah, okay. Uh, with the words for corn and Cherokee and the Muscogean languages showing no demonstrable relationship to this other vocabulary. That's literally what these no's mean is they're showing, saying the Muscogean and Cherokee are something different than the other ones. So there's nothing incorrect about this. Now, does that mean that it's the right answer? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it, it sounds pretty good considering that we were talking about the origin of the words for corn and this choice is talking about the origin for the words for corn. So I'm going to definitely keep it in. But notice how it's really just telling me it's, it's basically a much more elaborate summary of this entire right-hand column of the chart. So let's, let's look at B. Uh, the region is linguistically diverse, being home not only to these two languages, but also to the Muscogean language families uh, and to one Iroquoian language. Well, none of that has to do with the corn thing. The passage is about the corn thing, right? In fact, the last sentence is about the corn thing, right? So I don't care that there's multiple languages. I mean, that's true, I guess, but who cares? It has nothing to do with my dumb summary, which is that the they're talking about the origins of the word for corn. This doesn't mention that at all. C, corn-related vocabulary underwent changes when entering other unrelated languages, as can be seen by the divergence of the Kata word from the Chittimacha word it originated in. Well, here's a great example of, like, maybe something that's that's true. Like, I, I don't know that it underwent changes. Like, I guess it's two different words. I'm not even really looking at this column, though. Uh, they're, they're not talking about the specific pronunciations. I'm not an expert on this, so I don't even know how to say those things. For all I know, it is the same pronunciation. So I just really don't even know what that means. Plus, notice that both of those are talking about the same thing, the, these, these languages where the, the word for corn, we know where it comes from. It comes from the same people who made corn come into the Southeast United States from Mexico. So uh, the whole point of this last sentence is that we want the name of the crop to be decoupled from the, the, the word for it in the, in the origin language altogether. So uh, this is just kind of reiterating that two, two different languages are using the original Tato, whatever it is, Tatozokian word for corn, except maybe they have slightly different pronunciations of that word. But we're, we're trying to move away from that. We're basically trying to contrast the yeses and the no. This is just contrasting the yes versus the yes. That's not great. This is kind of more in line with what I expect. So let's look at D. 
Words for corn in the languages of the Muscogean family evolved from a common root, with the Muscogee word having lost certain consonant sounds still present in the Chickasaw and Choctaw words. This is, again, I don't know what this means. I, these are just letters. I, I don't know. I'm not an expert. And this goes to show sometimes why with the science passages or really anything on a topic that we're not familiar with, we are at an advantage when we know nothing. Because choice D makes no sense. I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know what the common root would be. I have no idea what the different consonant sounds would be. I, I have no clue what they're talking about. But remember, the SAT passages have to give us the evidence for an answer. So if I don't know what it's talking about, then it, it must be completely random because the answer has to be somewhere in the passage. Notice that A is getting to things that I can go to the passage and to the chart and point out, right? So let's just zoom out so we can see this whole big thing here. The origins of vocabulary pertaining to the crop. Well, they're talking about the origins right here, vary across languages. Some of these are yes, some of these are no. Uh, with the words for corn in Cherokee and the Muscogean languages showing no demonstrable relationship to the Tadazokian vocabulary. That's literally what the no's are saying. So it's talking about the chart. It's talking about the paragraph. It's, it's just a lot of the same ideas blending together. That's all that there is here. So remember, don't do deeper analysis on these questions, especially because you are not an expert. If you are reading something feeling like you need to be an expert in that topic, that's a good sign that, the, that you're just misreading it or you're trying to get too deep into it. There's probably something much more surface level that you can understand. Um, I'll also just say, you know, a thing to be nervous about is the vocabulary, right? I mean, we need to know what decoupled meant. It probably helps know what ubiquitous means. That means something is everywhere at once. Um, it also maybe helps to understand like when they say things like it's diffusing this phenomenon, which just means like uh, an event, something that happens, an occurrence. So diffuse means spread, pertain means relate to, right? So if we don't, if we get so flustered by vocabulary we don't know, then we start to think that all the words in the passage are important, right? Even the words like tanchi or whatever the, the pronunciation is where we clearly do not need to know it. Try to learn more vocabulary words so you can tell the ones that matter for us understanding the passage from the ones that are just jargon that are related to that specific topic. Nothing about these words, the, the corn words, actually matters to me here. I don't know how to pronounce them. I don't know anything about the consonant sounds. I don't know anything. And that's fine. It's not necessary to answer the question.